Hey, what's up guys? Opie here. Welcome back to my Bruce City Garden. Hey, today I wanted to cover uh, some, some pesticides that I use in my Bruce City Garden and show you what the applications are and, and what I recommend as a straw bill gardener. The, the, the first and probably the least invasive uh, pesticide that I tend to use is going to be this uh, diatomaceous earth. And you'll hear this referred to as DE on a lot of websites and, and forums, but that's just what they're talking about is, is diatomaceous earth. And basically what this is, prehistoric diatoms basically. So these are like little uh, fossils. And what this does, is just a, it's just a white powder see that and it's, it's just a really fine powder almost like flour but to an insect it's more like a field of glass shards so anything that crawls across this it's going to cut their exoskeletons open and these these pests are going to end up drying out and dying this stuff is very effective uh, it is food grade it's safe actually I've heard some people actually take um, capsules of these to and ingest them purposely for what reason I'm not sure but it is safe so this stuff works really good for obviously crawling insects say earwigs beetles uh, that type of thing extremely effective very cheap very safe so this is my probably my number one recommended pesticide right here diatomaceous the next pesticide I want to talk about is a uh, it's a caterpillar killer it's called BT or uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. And what this is, is a microorganism that occurs naturally in the soil. And uh, we've been able to culture this in the lab to create a more concentrated version of it. And this stuff is toxic only to caterpillars. And what happens is you spray this on the leaves uh, at about two tablespoons of this per gallon of water. And when the caterpillars come along and eat eat the leaves with the BT on it, the BT gets into their system, it reproduces in their stomach and it actually creates holes in the stomach of the caterpillar. Then within a day, they'll stop feeding and eventually they'll starve to death and they will die. This stuff is totally safe. Um, you could literally drink it if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but it's totally safe safe for kids it's safe for uh, birds and other wildlife bees you don't have to worry about anything like that uh, the only thing that this affects is the caterpillar it's extremely effective uh, it's fairly cost effective as well uh, i picked up this bottle for 12 to 14 dollars us and this will last me all season and probably all the next season as well really good stuff uh, it also works with tomato hornworms so if you've got a problem with those bastards eating up your tomatoes which I know I get at least one every year that just decimate a plant. Put this on as a preventative measure and you won't have to worry about hornworms at all. And this is about the time of year when they start coming out and start eating up my plants. So if you're having issues with caterpillars, get some of this BT, it's good stuff. All right, and my third most highly recommended uh, uh, garden pesticide, it's, it's also very safe. It's probably the most popular pesticide out there next to the diatomaceous earth is of course neem oil now if you haven't heard of neem oil uh this is a this is a cold pressed neem oil this comes from the neem tree uh it's pressed out of the leaves of the neem tree which is a uh it's just a natural pesticide this tree has properties of you know just keeping keeping your pests away and uh, so make sure you get the cold pressed neem oil now you can find at the garden centers, there's other different types of neem and uh, these uh, major companies like Bayer, they make, they make a neem product, but one, they're not cold pressed and two, they've been separated into, into different components. And a lot of times when they do that, you, you lose the most effective part of the neem. So if you go out there and look around, you can find cold pressed neem oil. It might be a little more expensive, but it's far more effective. Uh, I mix this at one tablespoon per gallon uh, with just a little dribble of uh, dish soap and spray this on my plants as needed, uh, typically about once a week. And really, I only use this when I start to notice some um, pest pressure coming on in the garden. Uh, otherwise, 
I, I don't I don't use it a whole lot. I've had this bottle for two years now, and it's still it's still up to here. It's fairly full yet. So the little bit goes a long way. It's really worth the investment. Really good stuff, and it can be used as a preventative measure. Um, this stuff is extremely safe as well. Has absolutely no effect on humans. Uh, has very little to no effect on other wildlife such as birds, bees, your pollinators. Um, Try not to spray this directly on the flowers if your plant is flowering. Uh, but otherwise, this is really good stuff. Uh, works great for like white flies, uh, flea beetles, those types of things. Excellent product. I highly recommend you get some neem oil. And the last product I want to talk about today might be a little contro controversial, and it's my least recommended product. I only pull this stuff out as a means of last resort. If I've got a pest that is overwhelming the garden or certain plants in my garden, I will use this very sparingly. Uh, I use it maybe once a season. I really don't like to use this stuff, and it is not safe to go on the table. Seven dust. Now, I see a lot of gardeners out there recommending seven dust like it's the greatest thing on earth. You've got to be very careful with this stuff. It will kill everything, and it will kill your pollinators just as well. The stuff is not safe to go on your table and if you're going to use it you need to make sure you're using it on plants that are not flowering and plants that do not have fruit on them. Uh, once you apply this product the fruits are not safe to eat for, for several days, several weeks even. So if you're going to apply this, apply it to a plant that is, um, is, is receiving pest pressure but the harvest time is still several weeks away. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to find something different. This stuff is not safe to go on your table. However, this stuff is extremely effective. It will kill everything and it'll kill it quick. Uh, I have used this for two applications. One, uh, Japanese beetles, which if you ever dealt with Japanese beetles, you know how ferocious they can be. I applied these to my green beans before they have flowered just as the Japanese beetles were taking hold, just to get rid of the infestation. They're gone now. I don't have any problems with it. I discontinued the use, and if I see any flowers come on, I will not use this stuff. Another thing I use seven for is I will dust the first few inches of my squash plants where the stem meets the bale, or the stem meets the ground. And what that's going to do is prevent squash vine borers from uh, A, laying their eggs, or B, if they do lay their eggs, it's going to kill them off immediately. If you've ever dealt with squash vine borers, you know how devastating they can be to your squash plants. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful moth, but they'll lay eggs on the base of your squash vine. And as soon as those eggs hatch, they'll bore into the vine of the squash, and they will live inside the hollow vine of the squash and eat it from the inside out. And it will kill your squash deader than a doornail. Uh, and that's that's the only thing I use this for when my squash are flowering. I will not use it So I apply this about once a year for about maybe a week or two Just as the plant is um, starting to reach maturity, but not flowering yet uh, Use a lot of caution with this seven dust. I I, I I can't say it enough Don't just use this stuff willy-nilly on your tomatoes and your fruits and then serve it up to your kids on the table That is very dangerous Right, so last case, there's nothing else that's gonna work. Seven dust. Now, as far as applying some of these liquid pesticides, such as the uh, the BT or the neem oil, you're gonna want a garden sprayer. I just got a simple one gallon garden sprayer, just like this, and uh, of course, just read the recommendations on the package as they are. But one thing you'll want to do is pick up some. Uh, some dish soap, not dish detergent, you want dish soap, and yes, there is a difference. The soap is much safer than any detergent would be to put on your plants. And what this is going to do is you just put a few drops up to maybe half a teaspoon in with a gallon of water with your pesticide product, and it's going to act as an emulsifier. It's going to help distribute that, distribute that um, pesticide throughout the water. You give it a couple good shakes and it's going to keep that pesticide in suspension. And it's also going to help 
It's also going to help the spray coat the leaves and actually stick to the leaves. So use a dish soap. Uh, Dawn is a great, great product. This is the cheap version of Dawn. That's all it is. Uh, and it is very safe. Now, obviously, it should go without saying, you want to spot test any pesticides or any sprays that you put on your plants. So just pick one or two plants throughout your garden, spray it, watch it for a day or two, and see if there's any adverse effects. If everything looks good, go ahead and spray the rest of your garden. If you notice any damage, you may want to adjust how much soap or how much product you're using. Um, if, you, if you decrease and you're still having issues, don't spray those plants anymore. Obviously, they just can't handle it. Um, you'd rather have a, a poorly developed plant or a, a slightly stressed plant than a dead plant, okay? Really, guys, that's just about all I've got, and that's really all I use here in the garden. Uh, and the one thing I left out, and it's probably the most important, is hand picking. Just go out in your garden and look around. You know, if you see eggs underneath your squash leaves, just scrape them off. Uh, if you find, you know, certain pests and bugs that you can grab and squish them, or feed them to your chickens or do whatever, that's probably the best way to go about it. But I know you can't always be in your garden, and sometimes these pests get out of hand. That's when these products work great. Just make sure you read the packaging on the labels, use these safely, and keep your family, friends, and wildlife in mind, and everything's going to go great. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me here at the Bruce City Garden. I hope you learned something today, and if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Hey, don't forget to check out my Facebook page. You can, you can find me at Facebook, at Brew City Gardener, and we did just start up a new group called the Global Straw Bell Collective. I want everybody from everywhere to, to join this group, join in, show us your gardens so we can, we can interact and learn from each other, and I think it's going to be a great time. All right, guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that subscribe. And don't forget to share this with a friend if you think it'll help them out too. That's going to help me out for sure. All right, guys, it's time to get out of here. We'll see you.